Hello YouTube and welcome back to another episode of CGL's Collectibles. In this episode I want to do something a little bit different. I want to take you guys on a personal tour, just a little flip through of my personal comic book collection, my very small personal comic book collection. Maybe to your surprise you might think, oh CGL he must have hundreds, maybe thousands of comic books. I actually have probably like in my personal collection I probably have like less than 20 actually. So we're going to go through all of them. We're going to go through book by book and the reason why I want to uh, show you guys those. The reason why I'm pumping out another video this week is because it's New York Comic Con. This is like the the hypest week of, of, of my year, really, in terms of collectibles. And not only do I want to show you my comic book collection, but I want to show you the type of books that I own and what type of book I'm going to try to add to my collection this year. It's very possible we walk away from New York City Comic Con not spending a dollar. Stuff's very expensive there. But at the same time, the quality of stuff is through the roof. There's not really a better show in the area where you're going to find better quality stuff. So there's a good chance that we might add a piece to my personal collection. But without wasting too much time, let's flip the camera around. Let's check out my personal collection of comic books. All right, guys, let's dive into my personal collection. I'm going to go kind of quick. Just not taking too long. I want to show you guys each book. We'll count them up at the end. I have raw books and I have slabs. We'll count them up how many at the end. And we'll see how many books are actually in my own personal comic book collection. Um, and I'll just say, we'll start off with some books that are going to be on the chopping block. Uh, Journey into Mystery 118. It's an awesome book. This is a great book. First appearance of the Destroyer, um, who was obviously a, a character in the MCU, which is a big deal. Um, but I liked him, you know, way before. He's one of my favorite Thor villains. This book's on the chopping block, though, because of its condition. Um, it, it takes a lot to be in my personal collection. And some of these books, uh, they're not going to last too, too long. <laughs> this is another one that I love. It's, it's awesome. Amazing Spider-Man number 29. It's a great book. Uh, second appearance of Scorpion. It's a great cover. Steve Ditko. He may be my favorite comic book artist of all time. I think these early Spider-Mans, whatever he did, numbers 1 through 30 or 1 through 31, I think they're some of the greatest books that were ever made. This is a book I don't necessarily want to sell, but at the same time, I do want to upgrade it. Going on to book number three here. Uh, Legion of Monsters, number 28. Now, I think this is a sick book. It's awesome. It's kind of different from the rest of the books that are in this collection. Um... It's certainly on the chopping block. If I if I ever get around to selling it, um, I definitely take, uh, you know, it's in really nice condition. It's obviously not graded, but it's in really nice shape. I would try to move it if the number was right. And the last book of mine that's really on the chopping block for the raw comic books, uh, Book Black Magic. I'm not sure which number this is, but it's from January of, of 1961. I bought it for all the wrong reasons. I bought it because when I first saw it, I thought it was Steve Ditko artwork. And it turns out he did do some black magic cover art, but this is not one of them. <laughs> so it just looked like it, but it's not actually Steve Ditko, and I, it actually loses all its meaning to me. But I, I saw it. I didn't want to pass it up if it was, um, but I, I checked it afterwards. All right, now here are some raw books that are in my personal collection that I'll probably never, ever sell. And it starts off with this one. Maybe you guys weren't expecting this, but this is uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, a comic book from Dark Horse. Uh, Avatar The Last Airbender is my, one of my, I should say, favorite shows growing up as a kid, and to have this comic book, this free comic book day, I'm sure a lot of people probably rolled it up and got rid of it, and nobody really, uh, saved it, or if they did, it might not be in great shape, but I have this one, uh, I really love it, and I'm never gonna sell it, ever. Moving on to another awesome book, Jack Kirby artwork, it's the, the king of comics, this is like the king of comic book covers right here, I mean... Journey into Mystery 112, Thor versus Hulk, the first time these two battle it out. Um, this book's in really great shape. I bought this in Chicago at C2E2. So for that reason alone, you know, that was my big purchase when I went out there. Uh, the memories of that trip and that show, first time being there. I'm not saying it's going to be my last time, but it'll be a while before I go back. But I'll always have this book to remember that experience, and uh, I probably won't ever get rid of it. All right, this is the next raw book that I have in my personal collection that I probably will never sell ever. And kids, I would turn away. This is adults only. At least that's what it says on the cover. Um, this is big. I'm not going to say the whole word. I don't know if this comic's going to get banned from YouTube or whatever, but um, big ASS comics uh, by famous underground artist Robert Crumb, revolutionary figure of his time. Uh, I've only seen one Robert Crumb comic book in all my years of hunting for comic books, and that's it. <laughs> I saw it, and I bought it. I wasn't going to let it go away. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on that one because I don't want YouTube to get rid of it. <laughs> so the next one is really cool book. A little This one also doesn't really match the rest of my books, but it's something that I always wanted. 
And it's something that I want more of. Um, Golden Age DC comic books. This is Sensation Comics. Um, this particular issue, I'm not a thousand percent sure. I know I can look it up and find it, but I think this issue is from 1943. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. But this was a one of the many amazing books that I got out of uh, New York City Comic Con last year. And like I said in my previous video, uh, this year's New York City Comic Con budget is not going to be as big as last year's. But this was one that I got uh, in a bundle deal with another awesome comic book that's in this uh, personal collection of mine. Uh, I love these early Golden Age comic books, and it's something that I do want to get into more and just build my collection around it. But yeah, those are my raw books. All right, guys, let's get into the CGC slabs. And again, there's not many of them, but I think the quality on these is nice. But I'll keep it in the same order. I'll keep the ones that I'm more willing to part with in the front and the ones that I'm less willing to part with in the back. So I'll start it off here with this bad boy, Super Villain Classics, Galactus, The Origin, 9.6. I'm not saying that I would sell this book because... It doesn't really make sense because the book itself isn't really that valuable. And if I ever want to just buy it again, I can definitely do that. But I have this book in my collection because of the cover of Galactus. And I think this, like, if you want a Galactus book in your collection that screams Galactus, screams awesome artwork, and screams just coolness, this is the book to do it. It is a number one. It is an origin story if you do are interested in reading it. But I just wanted a high-grade, high-value I uh, shouldn't say high value, but a high grade, a 9.6. Uh, I would only buy this book in a 9.4, 9.6, 9.8, and I have one, and I'm pretty good on it for a while. I'm probably not going to get rid of it, but at the same time, it's not really a prized possession of mine. All right, guys, moving on to book number two, slab number two, I should say. Um, Marvel premiere number 47. Obviously, this is a key issue for... Many people that are in the MCU universe, um, it's, it's a key issue in general. It's the first time that Scott Lang becomes the new Ant-Man. Um, it is written up there uh, in the little description. This one is a 9.6 white pages. This is a book that I would probably, out of all these books, all these slab books, this is the book I'd probably be most willing to part with. I, I Honestly, if the right buyer came along at the right price, I'm not actively trying to sell this, but I know that I could sell it, and I could sell it fairly quickly. Um, I'm not trying to sell it fairly quickly. I don't mind sitting on it and just waiting a little bit. Uh, if anybody wants to make offers, uh, I'll message you down in the comment section, but no, all jokes aside, um, this is just a book. It doesn't have a lot of meaning to me. Um, Ant-Man is not one of my favorite characters, even in the MCU, not one of my favorites. Um, never was, probably never will be. I get it. I like it. I, I think the book itself is very awesome. That's why I've held onto it in my personal collection for a couple of years now. It's just not a book that uh, uh, gets me going, but at the same time, I do appreciate it for being a key issue, being a 9.6 in white pages, um, for a book from 1979 is pretty, pretty awesome. All right, now we're going to start the X-Men run, and these are books that are probably not on my sale list. These are probably books that I'm going to just want to hold on to and collect. Um, their value isn't even that important to me. What's really important to me is just their stories, um, their artwork, and their characters. Um, this one, X-Men 99, 9.4 white pages. Uh, this is the first appearance of Black Tom Cassidy, who I said it several times. I'll say it again. I think I love the Deadpool movies, but they did Black Tom dirty because they made him kind of like a side joke character. I hope he comes back in a, in a multiverse or something where we see him on the big screen again. But with that being said, this is uh, X-Men 99 and it's, it's a really cool book. It's a really cool cover art. Anything with Sentinels on the cover, you know, it even... The, the CGC even mentioned Sentinel's appearance because I think it, they know that people are attracted to them. Um, but I love this cover, like Out in Outer Space. This is awesome. It's an awesome book. Next on the X-Men list, we go from 99 to X-Men 102. Um, this one's an, an, a CGC 9.4 off white to white. But you guys that are even slightly familiar with this channel probably know that Juggernaut is probably my favorite character in all of Marvel and all of comic books. Um, he's certainly my favorite villain. Maybe him or Hulk compete for number one, the number one spot. But this is a awesome Juggernaut cover. This is probably the Juggernaut cover to own, in my opinion. Um, Juggernaut with Colossus right on the right on the cover, just going at it. It's a great matchup. We saw it in Deadpool too. Um, spoilers, you haven't seen it, but at this point, you had to, you have to. Um, this book, I, I have read it several times. It does have a, a Storm origin story, and it is part of a multi-faceted uh, story. Um, 
Chris Claremont story with the Dave Cockrum cover. You know, this is, it's awesome. This is, to me, this is the best era of X-Men is this kind of like X-Men 95 to like X-Men 120 era. So uh, I really like love owning books from this, from this time period. And next we're going to stick with X-Men. We're going from 102 to X-Men 107. This is also a 9.4 off white to white pages. Again, we're writing that Dave Cockrum, uh, Chris Claremont era. And this book holds a lot of significance in little ways. And what I mean by that is there are a ton of first appearances in this book, so many that they don't even list them on the uh, the top description up there. Uh, I forgot if it's seven first appearances or 12. I forgot how many are actually in here, but this is the first full appearance of the Star Jammers. They are here on the cover. That I, I, so I guess that means that this is also their first uh, cover appearance. But there's the whole team right there. Uh, it is listed up there, first full appearance of the Star Jammers. Um, you also got a Mr. Fantastic and Thing cameo, but you have the first appearance of a lot of characters from the Imperial Guard, including my favorite character from the Imperial Guard, right down here with the blue mohawk, Gladiator. Uh, this guy is awesome. If I had to describe Gladiator, I would call him Marvel's Superman. And what I mean by that is he can fly around, he's a extraterrestrial being, he can shoot lasers out of his eyes. He can do all sorts of things. Superhuman strength. Um, he's a awesome, awesome character. I don't know if him and Superman ever crossed paths in comics, but they should one day, and we should see who who would come out victorious. Um, the reason why uh, I do love Gladiator so much is because you guys know my favorite villain in Marvel is Juggernaut, and there is a very famous, I'm sure a lot of us have seen it, uh, X-Men cartoon from the 1990s that they actually rebooted recently. Um gladiator makes several appearances in the uh the phoenix saga i believe is the series of episodes and his first appearance in the show he actually tosses juggernaut across an ocean which i was like that's my favorite character and this guy just flicked him away like he was a fly um it was insane to see him on i think they did a really good job in the cartoon to show his his aura and his character and for those reasons um x-men 107 i think it's an underrated book because because up in this description here, even for CGC, they don't list the the slew of first appearances. I don't think as many people are aware of how many first appearances are actually in this book, but I, I believe it's close to a dozen, whether it's a little more or a little less. And there's a lot of significance in this book. Next, here's a book that I don't want to say that I want to sell it. I don't. And that's why I have it more towards the back of the pile. But I do want to upgrade it because it's a low, it's a low grade copy. It is like my um, like my Sensation Comics. It is the oddball of the group. And you see me in the reflection here of this all-black cover. I love it. But this is uh, Batman number 37. This is from 1946. And in case you can tell why I love this book, it's an awesome Joker cover book. I mean, this book is freaking sweet. Um, the condition of the book, you see we got a, a gash of it missing here. We got a tear here. We got some chipping on the bottom. Um, it says $900, but don't worry, I didn't pay that much for it. Uh, I think I actually paid, uh, uh, I want to say $650 or $700 for it. But it's funny, I was watching this book on eBay for a year, and I went to New York City Comic Con last year, and I found the guy who had it listed on eBay, and I was like, dude, I've been eyeing this book for a while. Um, would you be able to you know, negotiate on it at all? And we, we did. We did a little back and forth, and I think we settled on $700. I think that was the price now that I think about it. Uh, 2.0 off white to white pages. That's, you know, it's not really important with as important, I should say with these golden age books. The point is that it exists and it doesn't say it up here in the description. It just says Joker cover and story, but this is the first appearance of the Joker van. And this is the first appearance of the Joker copter. And even though that's something that's not actually listed, it's not listed on the CGC description that it's the first appearance of these vehicles. I do think that it creates a more of a special significance to this book on top of the fact that it's a 1946 Golden Age Batman comic. It's an early number, number 37. It is a bold-faced Joker cover. I mean, the Joker artwork is awesome here. This is everything that I want in a, in a Batman comic book. And the fact that it holds the minor uh, significance of the first appearance of some of these vehicles that become repetitive throughout uh, the comics and shows and movies. I think it's a very important book, and I think it's something that is also a little underrated. All right, guys, and here is the last and final book in my personal collection. It is the most significant one that I own, and for many reasons, but um, it is X-Men 12. First appearance of Juggernaut in a CGC 8.5 off-white to white pages. Um, 
If you guys didn't know that I own this book, I, I did do maybe one or two videos in the past on, on when I purchased this book at New York City Comic Con last year. I think there's a lot of awesome reasons to own this book. For one, it's an early X-Men book. Two, it's a high-grade early X-Men book from 1965. And it's not only a key first appearance, but it's a key first appearance of a major villain in the X-Men storyline. That is, of course, Kane Marco, a.k.a. Juggernaut, the stepbrother of Charles Xavier. This is a really awesome book, not only just for me, but just comic books in general, X-Men books in general, Marvel, Silver Age in general. It's an awesome book to own. And for me, this is pretty much the crown jewel of my entire pop culture, comic book, action figure collection. I'm not just saying that because it's the most expensive thing that I own, even though it is, but it's the most significant thing that I own. And considering that this is my favorite villain and there's not a lot of copies in the world that grade higher than this one, even uh, trying to get this book in a higher grade is something that is on my priority list as time goes on. But the fact that I have one in an 8.5 I'm, I'm just not getting rid of this book anytime soon. I'm just really happy and appreciating the fact that I own this book in this grade. It's a book that my dad owns. Maybe he owns a couple copies of, but obviously uh, none of them really compare to, to an 8.5. This is, this is like the most awesome book that I own, and I don't know when I'm going to replace it with a more awesome book. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. This was and this is my personal collection of comic books. In total, we got 14 books. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> Everything else is for sale or it's gone. Anything that you've seen on the channel uh, gets through a constant uh, recycling process of trying to uh, pass it on to the next buyer um, or using it towards putting it towards books like these. Um, it's very important for me to own stuff of this caliber. This is this is why I collect. Um, that's why my collection is only 14 books. And quite honestly, um, if I could, I would even move more of these books and make it like a three book collection. Like I'd really just want to have these significant books. That's what I, that's what gets me going. That's what keeps me pumped up, keeps me motivated to keep uh, saving money so I can buy books like these. Um, that, that's really what's important to me. So with that being said, as we head into New York City Comic Con, which I have the video filmed actually already, I will be showing you guys. I'm very excited to release it. When I'm looking to add something to my collection, this is the kind of stuff I'm looking for. Um, it's it's a mix. It's definitely unique to me. At the same time, it is, uh, you know, it's kind of obvious what I want. I, I want high value, high condition, high significance books. And I really need something particularly special. I'll even give you guys some insight as to what it is I'm looking for. I am actively searching for Sensation Comics number 13. And I'll put a picture of it right here. This is the book that I'm looking to add to my collection this year from C um, from New York City Comic Con. It's a book that I would like to buy in person so I can put a story and a face to the buyer and to the whole experience. And there's uh, several reasons why I want to own it. For one, I want to continue to increase my DC Golden Age collection. I want that to be a focal point going forward is... Not only just going after the, the Silver Age Marvel stuff, but also going after some of the Golden Age DC stuff. That's just stuff that I, uh, it means something to me. It, the, it's the foundation of which our, our hobby is based on. And it's a, I mean, a Golden Age, it shrinks every year. Every year, a Golden Age book is destroyed in a fire. It's destroyed in a flood. It's, it's stolen. It's robbed. It's uh, torn up by a little kid who accidentally sneaks into his dad's uh, comic book collection. Every year, our golden age population of comic books goes down, as well as it does for the rest of these books. But uh, in terms of the number of prints, in terms of the number of copies that are out there, it's very, very difficult to come across uh, golden age books. And it's the reason why I actively seek them and why I want to store them in really ideal conditions to preserve them and to and to hold on to them for a very long time and and be that historian of uh, of comic books. This book obviously as you can see in the uh, on the cover holds a lot of historical significance in terms of what was going on at the time um being that I'm a history major in college it was my favorite subject in school. Um I do have a deep appreciation for the history of these books and for the history of the world as a matter of fact. That's why I want to own a book like this. Um uh, Sensation Comics number 13. We will see if we can locate one and if we can even make a serious offer on it. The problem that I'm going to run into is if I find any in high grade, I will simply not have the cash to acquire the book. I need to find really a low grade raw copy might be the only thing that I can afford at present time. And then we'll make a decision if the time comes to do that. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was fun showing you guys these books in full. 
full collection tour of, of the comic books. One day we can do the toys too and, and other pop culture stuff. Uh, but the next video that I will be posting will be the recap of New York City Comic Con to show you guys all the things that my dad and I bought. So see you guys in the next one. Have a good one and thank you for watching. Goodbye.